for our listeners who don't really know anything about Reprieve, tell us a little bit about what you do at Reprieve. Well, uh, Reprieve was set up by Clive Stafford-Smith, who actually was a lawyer. He is a lawyer. He's a trained lawyer in the U.S., and he came over to continue his work on the death penalty. So we assist a lot of people facing the death penalty worldwide. We have offices in Pakistan, in the U.S., uh, some fellows in Thailand and elsewhere. And we also work on other cases of secret prisons or Guantanamo Bay, for example, with a with a big big project of ours. So it's 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 offering legal assistance and fighting injustice committed by um, state powers. You've actually done a rather remarkable thing. You've been in contact with the uh, the chief executive officer over um, at the company called Lundbeck. Tell us what's going on there. So the Lundbeck situation is, is very interesting. It's slightly different to the other. In fact, it's very different to all of the other manufacturing companies that I've worked with on this case. Lundbeck are a Danish company, and they manufacture a drug called Nembutal, or pentobarbital, as it's known. And this drug is, as you probably know, being used to execute people in many, many states, in the most active uh, executing states of the U.S. But it's it's a new choice for them. They've just recently decided to switch protocol. So when they did choose to switch protocol, I alerted the company. Reprieve has been investigating this case for many, many months now. So, so we knew that this was going to happen. We told them in advance. And I, I spoke with various people at Lundbeck and said, look, very soon you will be the primary facilitator, the supplier of execution drugs for all executing states in the U.S. You will be holding up capital punishment there. And being a Danish company, obviously, they are not pro-death penalty. Um, not obviously, but, but it's pretty much a given in Europe. Mm-hmm. But this isn't a question of exports because they actually manufacture pentobarbital in the U.S. They have a manufacturing plant in the U.S. And so what they said to us was, oh, well... You know, it would be tricky to regulate because we manufacture in the U.S. and we don't have control. This isn't the case, and it's a a misnomer and a myth that needs to be dispelled because the pharmaceutical industry has a great deal of of control, and necessarily so, over the distribution of their drugs. So you have lots of dangerous drugs. You know, execution drugs, I think, fall squarely into the category of drugs of abuse, drugs that can be used for practices that the medical profession would not support. So after many, many months, um, and this happened at the meeting with the CEO that you've just mentioned, they acquiesced, and the CEO of Lundbeck, Ulf Winberg, said to me that, yes, he acknowledged and he accepted that there were steps they could take to restrict the distribution of the product. And I have researched these steps. There are various things they can do, and we're now in, in dialogue on what they will actually do. And what do you think will happen next? Um, You have slowly been wearing down these European companies that have been providing these drugs to the U.S. Do you have another target in mind? Certainly, yeah. There there are a couple of levels to this. You probably know about the export control that Britain put on execution drugs. We will, the moment uh, any state suggest that they might use a certain drug to execute, we'll put an export control on that drug so that British drugs can't be used to kill people. Mm-hmm. Similarly, other countries, other European member states will do the same. But the more important change that needs to happen in Europe on the export front is a change to the regulations on trade in instruments of capital punishment. So that I'm working on with others at Reprieve and other NGOs in Europe. That's one front. Then in the pharmaceutical industry more generally, I think Lundbeck's stance that will be that should be that will set a precedent and it should be the model that other pharmaceutical companies who say that they are against the death penalty, you know, and if they say that, mm-hmm. then they should follow that model and they should also restrict the distribution of their product so that it only goes to legitimate users and it cannot be used to kill people. Anything else you would like to add? Uh, No, but I think this is a very important moment in the history of capital punishment and the pharmaceutical industry's complicity because for many, many years there has been this sense that there was nothing we could do and that the lethal injection was sort of set in stone and was bound to continue. Actually, these investigations have revealed that it is not 
a humane and safe procedure, that which many people knew, but many people didn't, because as I say, there are lots of myths around this practice, and that actually, you know, pharmaceutical companies can say no. And if they start saying no, I think it's going to get progressively more difficult for states to continue to execute using medical technology. And that's obviously what we would wish for. Thank you, Maya. Okay.